Let's add a custom trim material and a custom trim pattern to Minecraft. 121 Minecraft modding courses available down below. With over 11 hours of content covering everything from the basics all the way to block entities and custom mobs. Oh ho ho! Right, we found us back in the channel once more. And in this tutorial, we're adding a custom trim material and a custom trim pattern to our Minecraft mod. So, of course, custom trims are, well, they come in two flavors, so to speak. We can either have a custom pattern or a custom material. Uh, but in this case, we're actually going to have both. Now, this actually depends on data gen. So if you don't have data gen, this is not going to work very importantly. So that is a thing that you will need. But let's just start by going to our tutorial mod class or rather our package over here. Right click new package called trim. In there, we need two new Java classes. The first one is going to be the mod trim materials class. And the second one is going to be the mod trim patterns class. Now, as always, of course, all of the code is also available to you down below. So you can double check that if you need to. We're going to start with the, uh, let's see, the materials class. Sure, we're going to start with the materials class. And this is going to look kind of like the following. We're going to have two helper methods or uh, one helper method and one method that we'll call in a second. Let's just take a look. So this is going to be a private static void register method. We're going to call this with the registerable of type armor trim material armor trim material is going to be our registerable then we're going to have a registry key of type armor trim material no not of armor trim very important this is of armor trim material armor trim key then we have a registry entry of type item this is going to be our item we're going to have a style and uh, making sure we choose the one from net minecraft text over here very important I'm going to call this the style. And then lastly, a float, which is going to be the item model index. There we go. In here, we're going to create a new armor trim material. I'm going to call this the trim material. This is going to be equal to a new armor trim material. Passing in armor trim key dot get value dot get path. This is going to obviously get the path of the trim key so that it has the correct name. Then the item. Then the item model index. Then a map.of which is just going to be empty then a text.translatable and we're going to do a util.create translation key with a trim underscore material and then this is going to get the trim uh, armor trim key that get value again and uh, not the get registry but get value very importantly that we call the correct method after the third closing parenthesis we then want to call the fill style passing in the style and there we go and to register this we then say registerable.register passing in the armor trim key and the trim material. This helper method is going to be really useful because, well, that is just going to allow us to very easily register multiple if we so choose to. Now, in our case, we only have one material, but that's fine. To get the material, we actually need a registry key of it. It's going to be a public static final registry key of type armor trim material. Pink underscore garnet equal to the registry key, registry key dot of. This is for registry keys dot of trim underscore material second parameter is an identifier dot of tutorial mod dot mod id and then pink underscore garnet is the name of this material and then we need a bootstrap method so this is a public static void bootstrap over here with a registerable of type armor armor trim material and this is going to be the registerable again and then inside of here, this is where we call the register method. So inside of here, we call the register method. No, not the registerable. It's still the register method. Passing in the registerable. Then doing pink garnet. So this is going to be the key. Then we have registries.item that get entry. Passing in mod items dot pink garnet because we want to get the pink garnet registry entry. Then style dot empty dot with color. We're going to choose text color dot parse and we're going to parse b03 fe0 you can of course change the text color here as well if you so choose to but here you also have to do a get or throw and then after the second closing parenthesis the model index and that's going to be a one for this case so this looks pretty crazy and it is but the general idea here is that we're basically registering a specific armature material with a specific name over here the, most of this rest is then just sort of you know getting the translation right having it so that it has the correct name over here and then the model index is very interesting that is one of the things that's really confusing but basically when you have a item model 
right? So the item models are based on this model index. And depending on what you go, so you can go from 0.1 all the way to 1.0, that changes the color that is displayed on the item model, right? So for our pink garnet right here, obviously we want it kind of pink, and I believe we can actually take a look at this. So if we were to go to our to the external libraries, to net Minecraft merge and so on and so forth, in the uh, assets, I do believe that this would be assets. And let's just take a look at any of the helmets right here, right? So we can see that the trim type over here, that is basically what we see. So if we had put in 0.1, then it would have the same color as quartz. If I had 0.2, then it has the same color as iron and so on and so forth. And 1.0 is actually amethyst, which is, I think, cl closest to our pink garnet over here in color. And that is why it shows this one. So basically changing this number, what it changes is the item model texture, right? That, that's the most important point. You can't really add any custom colors, or if you can, it is obscenely complicated so in our case we're just going to skip over it i don't think that that's too bad i don't think that that's too uh, of a, like an issue here in this case and there you go but that is going to be the trim material done and then we can actually move on to the trim pattern here we're actually going to have something where it's not going to be well implemented yet i'm actually going to copy over the contents of this and like i said there's one thing that isn't implemented but we're going to add this in just a second as always of course all of the code is available down below and see sometimes we also get like issues right here i don't understand why it doesn't import the class correctly but it is what it is but you can see that we have a kaupen trim pattern right here and the one thing that is missing is the kaupen smithing template we of course need for a trim pattern we of course need a smithing template to be used but you can see the general, well, the general way that this class is basically generated or that it looks is almost the same as the trim materials, just with the trim pattern, as you can see, right? So overall, it shouldn't be too crazy. It shouldn't be anything that you're like, I have no idea what's going on here. It's almost the same idea. With this done, then let's go to the mod items class and let's actually add that particular item over there. It's going to be quite interesting because this is going to be a public static final item. That's all fine. This is the count underscore smithing underscore template. There you go. Equal to the register item method. This is the count underscore armor underscore trim underscore smithing underscore template for the name right here. You want to get that right. And then this is equal to, or the second parameter is smithing template item dot of identifier.of tutorialmod.modid very strange over here i know but it is what it is and then this is going to be the name kaupen and then after the first closing parenthesis we'll also add feature flags.vanilla and there we go and that is the kaupen smithing template actually created very strange that we don't make a new template well it does create a new template with the dot of method right here somewhere around here it basically is and that's the whole idea so that is what we need Let's add it to the item group two. This is the count smithing template. That's going to be fine. And I believe that is the general idea. Let's also add this under the data gen just so that we have this on the model provider, just so that we are not running into any issues. This is going to be the count smithing template because, of course, it's still a normal item, let's say. And that is going to be fine. Do we need to add anything else to this? I do not believe so. So what we can do is in the trim patterns, we can now import the mod items class and both the trim materials as well as the trim patterns classes are done. Those two have to be registered via the data gen. But before we do that, let's first of all handle all of the stuff with our assets. So the first thing is the translation is actually a little bit more complicated. Now, it's not complicated for the trim material or the, the smithing template right here, but it is complicated for the trim material and the trim pattern because those actually look kind of like this. I just added them at the bottom over here. So you can see this the trim underscore material that tutorial mod that pink underscore garnet should be a self-explanatory where this comes from. But those two are actually quite important to have. Now, when it comes to the textures, well, let's first of all add the texture for the item. That's going to be very, very straightforward, right? This is just the calm underscore armor underscore trim underscore smithing underscore template dot PNG. Fairly straightforward. However, what about the textures for both the pattern as well as the material? Well, those go into another folder. So those all go into tutorial mode textures, new directory, and that's going to be the trims. And then inside of there, we have two new directories as well. That's going to be the color underscore palettes. There you go. Make sure to write this correctly. Color, the American spelling underscore palettes, right? Very important. And then in the trims folder again, models. And then in the models folder, another folder called armor. Once again, American spelling. In the armor folder, we are going to put in the Kaupen and the Kaupen underscore leggings.png. And then in the colors palettes folder, we're going to put the pink underscore garnet PNG. 
First of all, the models. So the models basically are going to be the trim pattern. So you can see the trim pattern. I just made a K right here and I, you know, made this a little bit differently. And then the leggings here are almost the same that we had before. I, I just use one of the vanilla ones and changed it up a little bit. That is basically the pattern. And then the color palette itself looks like this for the pink garnet. I think that is roughly, you know, what we want to see here. It is pretty cool. Highly recommended to also check out all of this stuff in the external libraries. Of course, merged over here, assets, Minecraft textures. And then under the trims right here, you can see, first of all, the general trim palette right here. So basically, in theory, you could just like change the colors right here. And then when it comes to the models, you can also have the models and you can see that, let's say, for example, the rib right here, you could change this if you so choose to. And the idea here is, of course, that the different grayscale colors right here then match with these grayscale colors. And then if you have a different color palette, then those will be replaced with the specific color palette. It's actually very well done. I actually kind of like the way that it is done. However, that is one thing that you need to do. However, in the assets folder, we're not done because, and this is extremely important that we add this. If we do not add this, none of this is going to work. Under resources, assets, we need to make a new directory called Minecraft. Inside of the Minecraft directory, we need to make another new directory called Atlases. So Atlases, multiple, A-T-L-A-S-E-S. -E Very important you write this correctly. And there we have a JSON file, which I will copy over. It's going to be called armor underscore trims .json. The contents of this are actually quite, you know, it's a lot basically. And the general idea is that what is this craziness? What this craziness is, is that we have permutations because, of course, we need every trim to be basically possible with every other like palette, right? So all of the palettes have to be possible with all of the trims. So basically, this is what this whole thing does. So at the bottom here, you can see we're adding a tutorial mod colon trims slash models slash armor slash kaupen, which points to, well, the thing that we've literally just added right here for the models, right? And the same thing goes for the color palettes down here where we add a, the pink garnet is going to be for tutorial mod colon trims, color palettes, pink garnet. And that has to be the case. You have to add this. If you don't add this, like I said, it's not going to work. And it's, it's all for nothing and it is not going to work. Very, very important. And after we have added this, we can now finally go on to use the trim materials and the trim patterns classes. For this, we're going to make in the data gen package a new Java class. This is going to be called the mod registry data generator class generate generator class there we go and this is going to look kind of like this it's going to extend the fabric dynamic registry provider we're going to hover over this and implement the methods which is going to be the get name in the configure method hover over this again create constructor matching super and then in the configure method we want to call entries start add all registries dot get wrapper or throw and here pass in registry keys, registry, registry keys. Yes, there you go, dot of, and then registry keys dot trim material. And then the second one is going to be the trim patterns or trim pattern in this case. We can leave the get name empty over here. We don't even need to add anything there. And of course, this particular class has to then be added to our tutorial mod data generator right here. That's going to be pack dot add provider mod registry data generator colon colon new but we're not done quite just yet because we need to define what the actual registries are going to do and for this we want to override the build registry method right here registry builder dot add registry for the registry keys dot trim material and then say mod trim materials colon colon bootstrap we can duplicate this once again and say this for the trim pattern as well and then here we want to do a mod trim patterns and then apparently the it is called bootstrap. And here I call it bootstrap. That's very funny. So bootstrap. There we go. And now it's called correctly. And that is basically it. So those are very important. Otherwise, the JSON files, because obviously the trim material and the trim pattern right here, those will actually create JSON files. And still, we are not done quite just yet because we need item tags. These are also extremely important. Just like the trimmable armor, you have to make sure that the material as well as the template are both actually, well, put inable. Put inable, is that a word? Well, that you can put it into the smithing table, right? So get or create tag builder item tags dot. This is going to be the trim underscore materials dot add mod items dot pink garnet. Not the pink garnet boots, but the general just pink garnet. There you go. And then another one, get or create tag builder 
item tags dot and this is for the trim underscore templates and then here we want to add mod items dot Kaupen smithing template and still we're not done yet because the smithing template also has to have a trim recipe generated and that is going to be in our mod recipe provider luckily super simple we're going to offer the smithing trim recipe right here passing in the exporter passing in mod items that count smithing template and then an identifier dot of tutorial mod dot mod id and then count so not Kaupen Joe, but Kaupen. And this right here obviously has to match whatever the name is that we're giving the, the custom trim pattern right here, right? So this name right here has to match the name given right here. And the same thing goes inside of the items class, obviously, right? So this name has to match it again. And now finally, we have all of the steps necessary so that our custom armor is trimmable or all of the armor is actually trimmable with our custom trims. So let's run the data gen over here. I'm pretty sure this should all work totally fine, if I recall correctly. So this should be all good. And once that is through, we're going to see that there's a couple of JSON files that basically generate. We're actually going to see seven of them. And I actually wanted to show you the different ones. This is under the data folder tutorial mode, trim material and trim pattern, as you can see. And this is basically how it is set up, as you can see right here and this one right here. So nothing too crazy over here. However, it is quite important that this is all done correctly. And once that is through, I'm pretty sure we should be good to go. So now let's jump into the game and see if it works. All right, I found it back in Minecraft. And let's just take a look right here. Let's first of all, just get a, let's say the iron over here with the countless smithing template. And you can see I can put in whatever I want over here, including pink garnet, which also is going to work absolutely freaking fantastic so let's just get let's say this one right here let's get one with redstone too let's just duplicate this there we go and let's get one with pink garnet as well because why the frick not and of course this also works with pink garnet in theory now obviously that's a little bit uh, you know crazy maybe this one would be kind of nice i like it and then also this is going to work with other templates as well so you can see i can basically mix and match in whatever permutation i so choose and you can see, I mean, come on, that is actually pretty freaking cool. I kind of like it. And let's see this one. There we go. That's the pink garnet run. And then this is redstone. I, oh, I love the redstone one. It's so cool. And then this one also works with pink garnet. Absolutely freaking fantastic. And that is, well, custom armor trims and a material and a pattern added to Minecraft. Awesome, man. As per usual, all of the code is available down below, but that's going to be it for this tutorial right here. Next time in this video, we'll talk about model predicates. Hope to see you there. So, yeah.